By the time Winnie and I make our way down the hill, everyone else in the unit is seated on the two long wooden benches that encircle the campfire. Six counselors stand with clipboards in hand and serious looks on their faces. No one is chatting or laughing anymore. All eyes follow us like a magnet. Winnie dashes to find a seat, but there's no room left on her bench, so I have to make do sitting next to a girl I don't know. I try to flash her a small smile, but her face remains stoic as she gives a cursory nod, like we're at a funeral or church sermon or something. My eyes dart back and forth across the faces of the other girls, who look just as serious and emotionless. My throat goes bone dry, a hint of metal on my tongue. Christ, Mom, you said this wasn't a Jesus camp. It seems as though we're all waiting for something, because the seconds stretch to minutes and still no one says a word. The silence is jarring, and in that quiet, I can fully hear the crickets, the cicadas, the birds calling and singing softly. The forest is never silent, even when we are. I bristle at a sudden, hollow clang of what sounds like church bells. They chime a strange, bittersweet melody, something in a minor key that sounds neither happy nor sad. It sounds off. I don't recognize it, not even from my years of practicing both simple and complex songs on the piano. After the song completes, the bells clang one solid tone three long times, then finally cease. Anna clears her throat and taps her pencil against her clipboard. She nods to the six other counselors standing at attention. Shall we begin? They nod in return. A ghostly pale counselor, with hair so blonde it's nearly white, stomps her feet three times. So does everyone else. Everyone except for me. Unit seven, she calls out like a drill sergeant. Unit seven, the campers say in unison. Unit seven countdown. The pale counselor points to a girl at random, the girl next to me, 